So before we get into the review, I want to mention a couple of three things. Firstly, I am by no means an expert when it comes to Napoleon Bonaparte, but I know one or two things about him and I consider him to be one of the most fascinating historical figures from the past few hundred years. For sure, just as a military commander, Alexander the Great, Khalid bin Walid, Cyrus the Great, Julius Caesar, Napoleon's name is always thrown into the mix and rightly so. I'm not expecting a factual documentary, that's rare with Ridley Scott anyway, even with his historical epics. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix is closer to the age Napoleon was when he died, and the man's wife was famously older than him, unlike Vanessa Kirby. But anyway, I guess the least we can expect is an epic film featuring cool battle sequences, right? It's quite the project for Ridley as well. His first film was the Napoleonic era The Duelist, a beautiful looking film. He bookended his filmography with The Last Duel, his best film in years. And now here we are with him tackling the mammoth project of bringing Napoleon Bonaparte to the big screen. But I was kind of weirded out by the film's trailers for two reasons. Firstly, they seem to put a lot of emphasis on Napoleon's relationship with his wife Josephine. The kind of vibe you got from the trailers was that she had a hold over him. He was romantically conquering Europe for her, that kind of stuff. Which was strange. I mean, what is there to suggest that he was doing all this for her? Also, there was a lot of stuff shown in the trailer. The Battle of Toulon, Napoleon in Egypt, his coronation, the invasion of Russia, all sorts. And each of these events and sequences in Napoleon's life, plus more, could easily have entire films dedicated to them. There have been entire films dedicated to them. My thinking was, with a runtime of just over two and a half hours long, that there is no way you can tell a proper story of Napoleon's entire life in that runtime. It just won't work. You'll have to blitz through the events on a speed run. My feelings were compounded, my desire to see the film in cinema dissipated, when Ridley Scott said that there would be a four hour cut of the film available on streaming after the theatre release. And I thought, well, that's more like it. That sounds like a proper runtime if your intention is to do a complete biography of the man. Why watch this version when there's going to be one almost an hour and a half longer available? And Scott mentioning this before the release of the film sounds like a sly way of saying the version in cinemas is not my actual vision for the film. Anyway, much of what I feared the film would end up being, ended up being the case. Napoleon is not a terrible film, but it is not a great one. It doesn't do the man's life justice, and that's in part due to it being all over the place, a kind of quickfire compilation of the man's life. The entire film feels like a trailer for the longer version of the film. There's even scenes that seem to cut away in the middle of characters' sentences. It definitely feels like there's more movie here somewhere. The film is incoherent, consisting of a bunch of different events loosely tied together and having no overarching cohesiveness. Events in the movie lack context and as a result they lack impact and meaningfulness, like when Napoleon is crowned emperor. The movie isn't even really about his military career and there isn't a whiff of his military genius, aside from one scene with the ice which they show in the trailer. That stuff is almost secondary. Much of the film's focus is Napoleon's romance with his wife Josephine. They probably should have called it Napoleon and Josephine. That would have been more apt and would have certainly put a hold to the complaints that are going to start coming about the film, about it focusing way too much on them two and their weird romance. I mean, you had major things like Italy and Trafalgar skipped over and instead extended scenes of Josephine looking sad in a carriage. It really is quite bizarre. I can't wrap my head around the idea of making a biopic of Napoleon for two and a half hours. And on top of that, you spend an extraordinary amount of time on his relationship with his wife, the depiction of which is largely fictional if I've got my facts right. We didn't turn up for a cheesy soap opera, come on Ridley. The movie feels pretty ordinary. Nothing in particular stood out. The acting was okay, the story was okay, the battle scenes, which I was really pumped for given it's Scott, were again not terrible but just okay for the most part, barring a few excellent moments, though most of the combat compromised of people repeatedly firing cannons at lines of soldiers, a real lack of tactics on display. The battle scenes were actually better in The Last Duel, and that wasn't even a war movie. The movie had some horrible colour grading, really generic tint, like everything in Egypt looking yellow and everything in Russia looking blue. You've got all these extras and solid practical effects enhanced by CGI 
and in typical modern day movie fashion they slap some ugly tint all over the screen. And is it me or is this film dark? Maybe it was my cinema screening but I felt like someone turned down the lights. Scott's filmography has always had that kind of workman-like feel, the director for hire. Just give him a good script and he'll give you a good looking movie. But Napoleon really feels like a film where everyone just turned up to work and gave it the minimum amount of effort and passion, just enough not to get fired. And what you're left with is a film that just about does its job. And the depiction of Napoleon is weird. Phoenix plays him like he's stoned out of his mind, about to doze off any second. And he's a right weirdo. The charismatic general we've read about in history books is replaced by a strange cuck with mummy issues who seems to like to be dominated by his other half. I guess Scott was trying to satirise the narrative of the great man, the idea of great men achieving great things, but this is not the story to pick to do that. That was one of the most frustrating elements of the film, whether by design or not, Phoenix was not playing Napoleon in this movie. He's a bit of a doofus really, socially awkward and lacking spirit. It felt like Travis Bickle playing Napoleon. It's consistent, I guess, in general with British interpretations of Napoleon, but that kind of stuff is known to be historic propaganda. I was hoping for an interesting look at the man as a person, or at least the life he lived. Ultimately, I'm indifferent to the film and to the titular character. He wasn't likeable, he wasn't hateable, he was just there. Where was the charisma that he was known for which made his soldiers loyal to him? That part of the movie where the military personnel charged with sending him back to exile, going over to his side after his speech, felt so unearned because he was a boring fart in the film. It was a piss take portrayal of the man and I didn't feel a single ounce of emotion watching this film, unless boredom counts. Honestly, the portrayal of the man borderlines on parody to the point where if I was French, I'd feel offended that this Englishman makes a film and makes one of the greatest men of the 19th century and character assassinates him into a dorky loser. I'm not really sure what the film is trying to say, if anything. The ending title cards, for example, mentions the date of his death and notes that he participated in 60-something battles, even though he only saw about three. And then it goes on to list the amount of people that died in the battles. I found that weird. Like, what are you trying to say? Is the takeaway that his battles were destructive and caused death and all of this was frivolous? Because I really wasn't getting that vibe from the rest of the film. I'm not even sure the film knows what it wants to be. It reminds me of Scott's House of Gucci, which was an interesting watch, but all over the place. Is the movie supposed to be funny? Is it supposed to be tragic? I really don't know. One of the most surprising elements of this film is how small-scaled everything feels. You'd never get a feel that Napoleon was considered the greatest military man alive at the time, a larger-than-life character. The man ended a 1,000-year Reich, got a huge success in Russia and Prussia, pretty much ruled all of Europe through intense, huge-scale battles and it eventually took seven coalitions to eventually beat him. That scope doesn't come through in Scott's final product. And even this four hour cut, apparently it includes more of Josephine. That's who we need less of. It's like Scott had a film mapped out for her and had to reluctantly include Napoleon in or something. So all in all, this will not go down as one of Scott's great historical epics. It doesn't hold a candle to Gladiator or Kingdom of Heaven. Rather, it is unfortunately a misfire. Thanks for watching.